Why, hello there. This video is requested by one of my subscribers. Hello. Thank you for requesting this video. It took me a while because I actually did my homework. So I'm gonna try and make this as quick as possible because I actually went through notes of each fragrance. This is a video all on my fragrance collection and it's just some notes on each fragrance. So I'm gonna make this as quick as possible. It's not a ton of fragrances, but these are fragrances that are very near and dear to my heart. Um, first things first, this is how I store my fragrances. It's on this guy from Amazon. It's like a little lazy Susan guy. So I like it, super cheap. This was actually the way that I primarily stored my fragrances, but now because I'm organizing and like decorating my beauty room, I'm going to have a slightly different system. So I will update you on that. First things first, we have the fragrances. I have it kind of sectioned off. So first brand is Chanel. I work for the brand I have a a decent collection, but it's only because I primarily like these fragrances. Not saying I don't like the other ones, but I love these. There we go. So first one is the Cristal Overt. This is the Eau de Toilette. And this guy is more of a fresh, floral, very green fragrance. It has honeysuckle and jasmine. I like this one. It kind of reminds me of like a nice summer day in Central Park, which is New York, if you didn't know. Moving along, we have the Paris Venice or Venice fragrance. This guy is also an eau de toilette, and this is more of an oriental floral with light freshness uh, from Vanilla, Tonka, and Neroli. I love this one. This is like, I don't know what to wear. I'm running out of the house. I'm just gonna spray this because everyone likes it, and it's not offensive. Uh, next is probably, ugh, I want to say my favorite, but it's tricky. Uh, top three of Chanel fragrances. This is a uh, low number five. This is an eau de toilette. This is the limited edition red bottle. This is more of a citrus fresh fragrance. It has a top note of lemon and like citrus and fresh deliciousness. And this guy is more of the modern take on the classic number five fragrance. Out of all number five renditions, this is my favorite. Next is my least favorite out of all of the fragrances I own, but it was a gift. This is the number five Eau Premiere. And that looks like that guy. I call it the, oh, and this is Eau de Parfum. I call it the powdery number five sister. Uh, this guy, yeah, it's just not my favorite. It's more of a rich floral. Um, I'm sorry, a feminine and powdery floral with a touch of vanilla. Moving right along, this is the classic number five. This is an Eau de Parfum, also limited edition bottle. This one is a rich floral. Um, and I would say it's more of a kind of oriental floral, but it is, uh, it is a classic chic timeless. I mean, yes, a lot of people will say, oh, my grandmother wore this or my mother wore this. I get that. Everyone says that. Um, it has May Rose and Jasmine and yeah, it's just, uh, it's beautiful, but it's an acquired taste. When I grew up, it was what my grandma wore and I was just like, oh, I hate it. But now on different people, it is so chic. So, and it really does smell different on everyone, but a lot of fragrances do. Next is so, so, so good. This is part of the Le Exclusive collection that you can get online and at the boutique. Um, this is 1932. This guy is gorgeous. This is an Eau de Parfum. This one is a floral. Um, it has a cord of jasmine, pear, and grapefruit. It is called 1932 because this is the year that Gabrielle Chanel created her line of fine jewelry and like within the brand. And it is supposed to represent the feeling of wearing yellow diamonds. And you just feel so chic when you wear this. It is just so sophisticated. Every time I put this on, oh, it's so good. I love this. Oh. So beautiful, love that one. Then you have Coco Mademoiselle Intense. This is an Eau de Parfum, and this guy is intense floral. 
and this one has um amber accord tonka bean and vanilla i should know this but i haven't been at work in months so give me some slack i do really like that i like that better the intense version than the original coco mademoiselle just the dry down of that is just absolutely stunning and last is the coco noir this one it is the eau de parfum and it is an oriental floral this guy has patchouli and tonka bean and it just adds that spice and warmth i consider this like the little black dress it's my confident fragrance or my nighttime fragrance i just really like this one all right so that is chanel then we have diptyque this is a newer fragrance line for me. I've always loved the candles, but the fragrances, I never really felt like they wore so well on me. But then I kind of dip my foot in and one of my really good girlfriends, she wears them and it just, ugh, when I smell them, it reminds me of her. But I started wearing them and I love them. Starting off with the fragrance Tam Dao. This is Eau de Parfum. Also, the artwork is gorgeous. This is a woody, velvety, sandalwood type fragrance. This really, to me, almost could be unisex. Um, I'm not sure. I'm pretty... Don't, don't quote me. These could be unisex fragrances. I don't know if it's male or female, but... Um, this to me, I would almost put in a masculine category, but this, when I mix with other fragrances, is a beautiful kind of musky fragrance. So I love mixing the Diptyque fragrances, so this is a really good one. Next, I love, love, this is my favorite Diptyque fragrance. This is the Lombre Dans, Dans, Lombre Dans Low, Lombre Dans Low and it looks like this. This is the limited edition bottle. It kind of has like a pinkish hue to it. This is the Eau de Toilette, but I also have the Eau de Parfum, which looks like this. And this guy is um, a floral with intense rose and black currant berries. I love this one. It's just so sweet and feminine and sexy. Really love this one. Then if you saw in one of my hauls, one of my new, no, my newest fragrance is the Eau Capital, which is so beautiful. And this is an Eau de Parfum. This is sweet and spicy with rose, bergamot, and patchouli. And then lastly, we have the Eau de Sens, which is this guy. Also, uh, limited edition packaging, got that orange hue to the bottle. This is Eau de Toilette. It's a limited edition bottle. And this one is floral. Um, it basically is supposed to encompass the idea of getting the entirety of a bitter orange tree with like the branches and all, which I love. I love just the ideas and the stories behind fragrances. I think it's just beautiful. So I think Diptyque really tells a beautiful story with their fragrances. Next, this one I wanted to keep in the box. I thought the box was so pretty. I love just Hermes in general. And so this fragrance, was a surprise hit for me. I do like more sultry, sexy fragrances, and this one is exactly that. This is the Eau de Citron Noir, and this is from Hermes, and this guy, oh, this is a cologne. This is spicy and dry with black lemon, black tea, and wood. Um, honestly, I would have Mike wear this, or I would wear it, but it's mine, I want it. So it's beautiful, I love this one. Next, we have Byredo. This is an Eau de Parfum. This is Bal d'Afrique. If I'm butchering these names, just deal with it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, this one, oh, it's so interesting. It's very intricate. I put it on, it starts off spicy, and then it kind of goes down to a sweet note. Um, it's warm and spicy and sweet, which is funny, I just said that, with African marigold, bergamot, cedarwood, and vetiver. Next is uh, Aqua de Parma. I'm going to butcher this. I say it's Magnolia Nobly. It's definitely like Noble or whatever. Uh, so this is the Aqua de Parma. This is Eau de Parfum. And this is a floral with bergamot, lemon, citron, and magnolia flower. Also has rose and jasmine. Do you see the theme? Floral, 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 floral. <laughs> like, mm. All right, then we have Lalabo. This is Ylang 49, 
And if you notice, I've definitely showed you guys this in a video. Where does it say it? Right there. Do you see that? Bad ass bitch. Yep. I'm that idiot. <laughs> I'm just that idiot. Uh, this guy is uh, a woody floral with <laughs> gardenia, ylang ylang, patchouli, vetiver, and sandalwood. This also, <sighs> this is a regret purchase because I should have gotten a sample, worn it around for a while. It is so strong. It stays on your clothing. It stays on your skin, which is great. This is what you want for like a $300 fragrance or like 250. But it's like, I don't know. It didn't grow with me. I just don't love it. So I don't really reach for it. It was expensive. Like, I don't know. No offense to Lilabo, but I just, that one left me wanting more. Next we have, oh, I love this one so much. This is the Guerlain or Guerlain. I can't, I'm, I just, some people say Guerlain, but I know, yeah, Guerlain. Uh, this is the Black Perfecto by La Petite Robe Noir. Uh, this guy is an Eau de Parfum. It is a spicy floral with rose, leather, licorice, and almond. I just have to show you this bottle again. How chic is that? It's like a cute little building. Oh. I love this floral so much. It reminds me of the Coco Noir, but I won't lie. I like this so much better than the Coco Noir. Oh, like I've actually made a good dent in this and I don't make dents in fragrances. Moving along, we have Tom Ford. This is Cafe Rose. This bottle has been with me for years. Uh, this guy you'll see is busted on the corner and I have about that much left. This one is also stupid expensive, but if you like rose the way that I like rose, Tom Ford and fragrances, it's otherworldly, very expensive. It's an investment. Mm, this was a gift, thank God. But oh my God, this fragrance, just gonna say that uh so this guy is a it's called a spicy floral which to me i can kind of see it but when i read the description of it and the notes in it it just made me appreciate it more it's a spicy floral with coffee black pepper patchouli and three different types of rose i just love everything about tom ford i love just his architecture background i love the packaging on his cosmetics i love the fact that the next fragrance the Black Orchid, he wanted to make this fragrance so perfect that he couldn't find a flower perfect enough that he actually got a botanist to create a new, a new breed? Okay, a new species? What am I looking for? A new flower. He created his own truly Black Orchid. Like that's what a badass he is. So yeah, you've got Black Orchid, you're gonna laugh at my bottle, but I don't care. I got a little set <laughs> with two little babies. So you have the, hold on, let me do this. You have the Black Orchid and you have the Velvet Orchid. And I just, I wanted to make sure that I really loved it. And this is what you should do with fragrances so you don't go to Lilabo and spend $300 on something that you're really never gonna finish. Um, but I hardly wear these, but when I do, I'm just like, mm, walk down the street like, yeah, I love these. But yes, this is the Black Orchid. This guy, um, is an eau de parfum. It's a floral oriental with jasmine, ylang ylang, black currant, black orchid, dark chocolate, and vanilla. Oh, so good. Then we have the velvet orchid. Oh, also EDP. This is a sultry floral with bergamot, mandarin, purple orchid, and rose oil. So I love these. I just won't get rid of these because sometimes you just want to dab a little and it's just something very sexy. Tom Ford does sexy fragrances just right. That's all I'm saying. And the last Tom Ford is actually an all over body spray. This one. This one is the Noir de Noir. 
And this one was actually his first fragrance that he created in the Private Blend collection. And this guy is a rich, deep floral with black rose, black truffle, and patchouli. I just love the spiciness, the sexiness of all of these fragrances. So Tom Ford was my first dive into luxury fragrances, and he just kind of set the bar really high. Next, we have Malin and Getz. This is the cannabis fragrance. Looks like that. This is an eau de parfum. This is green and spicy with bergamot, cedarwood, patchouli, and sandalwood. I'm not gonna lie. This one I do really like. I love the candle. I think these are really nice and potent. They have a ton of essential oils. I use these as bathroom sprays. So right now I have the dark rum in my guest bathroom and it's not even close to like halfway done. So once I use that up, then I have the cannabis. It's super expensive. You don't have to do that. But in my line of work, there are perks and I don't pay for this. So it's really great. But would I wear it as a fragrance? Yeah, for sure. But I just have a lot of other fragrances. Next, we have Jo Malone. Again, little bottle. Um, and the only reason why I kept this little bottle is because I do love, love this scent. But I just haven't had the best luck with the longevity of fragrances from Jo Malone on my skin. Uh, this is the Poppy and Barley cologne from Jo Malone. It's like so small. Can you even read that? It's ridiculous. Poppy and Barley cologne. This is a floral fragrance with black currant, fig, white musk, and barley. I love this. This is one of their newest fragrances. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Would I buy the candle or the hand wash over this? Absolutely. I will use those time and time again, but this fragrance, to me, I wouldn't buy and wear the fragrances, but when I smell it on other people, I'm like, oh my God, you smell so good. But then I spray it on myself and I feel like I don't smell it 10 minutes later. It just doesn't last. However, I did get suckered in once and I got the English Oak and Red Currant Cologne. And this is the smaller size of the fragrance. And this size is one ounce. I think this is legit like 85 or like $105. Um, I have that much used. <laughs> it's very nice. To me, it's more of a fall fragrance. This one is, I said, a cologne. A uh, fruity floral with red currant, rose, and oak. So it's a beautiful fragrance. However, it doesn't last on me. So when I wear this, I spray it on my skin and I wear it on whatever article of clothing I'm wearing. So that is it. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. I stopped there because the site that I was looking at, it had all these fragrances. It was so easy to find the notes. And then I have like four others and it just, it couldn't find it. So I was like, oh, I'm lazy. So if they don't have these and they must not exist, obviously they exist. Um, this one, it's sentimental to me because I used to work for Bobby Brown and I love this fragrance, but I was just too lazy to look it up. This is uh, Bobby Brown Bath. I love this fragrance. It just smells like clean bath. <laughs> oh, it just smells like cleanliness. And I also like the fragrance Beach. I wouldn't wear it because again, I work for Bobby and I smelled that fragrance all the time. So to me, I'm like, okay, I smell Beach a million times, but to mix bath and beach, ugh, I used to call it bathing at the beach and it smelled so good. And it reminded me of being in the Hamptons with my family and going to the outdoor shower and just being right by the water. <sighs> it was the best thing ever and I would wear that. But I just haven't gotten around to buying beach because I would never wear it. But for sentimental reasons, I would get a small bottle, even though they don't have small bottles. It was just this big bottle. So, and I never wear this, but again, sentimental reasons. But I don't know the notes. Just imagine a really delicious bar of soap. That's what bath smells like. <laughs> Next, I have the Giorgio Armani C Passion. I hope that's how you would say it. That's how I would say it. Uh, this is, I'm pretty sure, Eau de Parfum. 
<sighs> just remember how I like Black Perfecto, how I like Coco Noir. It's a little less dark and deep and sultry. It's more like, just like a beautiful, rich floral. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. And then I have two, are these both? Yeah, both roller balls. Is this a roller ball? Yes. I have the Orbe Cote d'Azur. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Yeah, maybe. So I, it just smells like all the Orbe products and I love, love the smell of Orbe products. So I actually take this when I travel a lot. So I just like it because it smells like nice clean hair. And then lastly, this is the Malin and Getz Leather uh, Essential Oil. It's 100% perfume oil. It smells so good. It smells like brand new, but even better, delicious leather jackets, shoes, handbags. Um, I love the candle. I own the fragrance and I used it up. I love this. Like just opening this, I'm like, hmm, leather. <laughs> but I was too lazy to look up the notes. It probably says it here, but I'm just way too lazy. So that is all of my collection. I will definitely keep you guys updated when I purchase more fragrances, but until then, this is all I got. I cannot wait. I have more videos to film and I will share those with you when I'm done. I hope you guys appreciate it. I put on makeup, like your girl is kind of getting back in the swing of things. Um, I haven't put on jewelry. I'm like, I guess crazy. All right, and if you like this look, like, let me know, I could do a tutorial. It is the easiest look. I'm kind of mixing my products and trying out different things. So I'm kind of into it, very glowy, but I like it. <sighs> yeah, pat on the back. I finally got this video out. All right, have a wonderful day. Please remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell if you wanna see more videos and hit the like button if you liked this one and give me more videos to do. Like I love it when you guys throw out video ideas, it makes my day. All right, have a wonderful day, stay safe and I will see you guys in my next video, bye.